Um, warning, this is for testing, sorry. Um, not that, but I really like that work. I'm so sorry. Um, so hello. My name is Lorena Ramirez Lopez. Thank you to the Open Source Hardware Association, this opportunity to uh, participate in the summit and also this community. I have been part of the open source um, software community, but this is my first time actually hearing and engaging with you all in the open source hardware community. I hope that we can continue this conversation and collaborate because I come with a lot of questions and problems from my view and field from the audiovisual archiving world. Um, I am part of a nonprofit organization called Transfer Collective. We work with artists, activists, individuals, and groups to lower the barriers to preserving at-risk audiovisual media, especially unseen, unheard, or marginalized work, but providing low-cost digitization services and fostering a community of support for archiving and access through education, research, and cultural engagement. Um, we all are volunteers trained in either library sciences, archival sciences, or art. We take what we know, we share it, and we apply it to our workflow. So I'll be speaking from our DIY perspective rather than a single specific museum or archive approach as these workflows and problems overlap. Um, I present to you a basic workflow for a minimal viable workstation, image thanks to the audiovisual, uh, audiovisual preservation exchange. This workstation to digitize tapes can be more robust and complicated, but we believe that anyone can do it. We encourage people to digitize and transfer their own analog tapes as professional vendors and services are not always an option. The ability to digitize tapes and display, it all stems from having the equipment and understanding of what is happening to your tape when digitizing. However, that is where one of our problem lies, the equipment. The majority of the, these equipment and products are discontinued, no longer produced, or are obsolete. And a lot of the time, the knowledge and manuals on how to use and repair the equipment is lost and or impossible to attain. Um, we have looked towards other communities and have tried to adapt some practices and policies to the preservation and conservation of audiovisual digitization. Hey, Lorena, we're yeah. getting a little bit of uh, mic noise. Um, so if you just make sure that you uh, have it clearer of your zipper, I think it'll be fine. Sorry. No, no, it's great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sorry That's for great. that. That's um, so I will go back to saying that um, we are very fortunate to have an amazing community of generous developers who overlap with the audiovisual archives and museum field. It's because of these folks who have worked in programming, broadcasting, and editing that we have been able to apply open source software to our process. For example, v record is used for capturing a video signal and turning it into a digital file. Um, DV Analyzer will be used for migrating data from DV tapes into digital files that's suitable for long-term preservation. It is currently still under development thanks to the moving image preservation of previous sound, and rice page. The Bay Area Video Coalition developed two key tools which conservators and archivists use to enable inspections of video signal characteristics of factors of digital media. We've benefited from these tools, even though sometimes staff doesn't know how to use them at times. We don't see as much of this collaboration or sharing with open source hardware tools. I love that MuseDuino is an option for exhibition, but we worry about how to find and how to use the obsolete equipment to digitize some of the media, um, this media and artworks before it can even be displayed. So, decks, rest in peace. Finding the appropriate deck is becoming harder and harder as manufacturers cease production and certain parts, such as the video drum heads, are no longer even available to be made as it is limited and valuable earth metals can no longer be sourced. We pseudo solve this problem by just hoarding decks. We stockpile working decks. We even stockpile not working decks so we can savage part, scavenge parts. Um, but even with these parts, we don't know how to fix them because of lack of manuals, experience, and the complexities of these parts. Uh, I wish I could ask to see how, by see a show of hands, how many people ha like has opened their VHS type deck when they were a child because that might help put these decks and their parts into perspective. The video head drum, which is essentially reads the magnetic tape, that has all the information is fragile, made of rare earth metals, and is super, super tiny. 
hopefully this diagram scale shows just how tiny the drum can be. A drum hen can get dirty and clogged and even broken by a fingerprint, which would ruin the digitization of your tape. Um, I'm going to quote um, Apex to kind of this, um, which is the audiovisual preservation exchange to talk about the other equipment we use. So I like how they describe TBC, the heartbeat of the video digitization system, the time-based corrector or TBC for short, is important for stabilizing and synchronizing the video signal during the transfer process. The TBC helps make adjustments to luminance, contracts, hue, saturation, helps and helps sync the time. Making these signal adjustments with a TBC can help ensure that um, can help ensure the values of the video signal are within legal broadcast range. Similarly, an audio mixer is the audio equivalent of this process. It is used to make adjustments to the audio levels. This includes raising or lowering the audio levels, making them louder or quieter, adjusting the gain, and, moder and monitoring the mono and stereo channels. Sometimes some of these adjustments could be done on the TBC instead of the audio mixer, but it depends on the TBC. And currently, we are hoarding these two. Even though there are new time-based um, correctors, because broadcast still needs to make adjustments to all these items, uh, these machines can go up to tens of thousands of dollars which not even a museum can convince their own accounting or registrar to buy at times. We live in a digital world, and these analog tapes need to be converted in order for our computers and systems to understand. If not, we just get errors. The capture card is the device that converts the video and audio signals from analog to digital information. Blackmagic has some great capture cards that were compatible with not only computers, but also analog monitors and equipment via breakup cables and they were affordable. Unfortunately, Blackmagic has discontinued everything we used, which creates a problem because some of our open source hardware, software, like vRecord, relies on a Blackmagic hardware component. So to troubleshoot, we hoard these, and we buy them when we see them on Amazon and eBay, and then we rely on either proprietary computer and digitization software that hopefully is compatible with our capture card and um, the computer being used. And I completely agree and echo the mission and goal that open source hardware belongs in museums, cultural organizations, archives, and institutions. I would love more collaboration. I'm a big fan of the Museduino um, from their west, um, website, which thank you for making it public. This photograph of the bird call matching game exhibit installation, which is an interactive um, installation at the Acadia National Park, is controlled by an Arduino. And thanks to a fellow colleague, Caroline Hill, for this photo of her using a Raspberry Pi to run the game Yard's Revenge by Howard Scott Warshaw. Um, so there are possibilities for display and interactive installations, but my worry lies with the workflows before display and installation. How do we clean tapes to prep for digitization? How do we find decks to read these carriers, these tapes that contain important information? Can we create capture cards that we might be able to maintain? Can we digitize tapes before it's too late? And then there are some artworks and displays where obsolete equipment such as cathode tubes or CRT TVs and radios are what we would call dedicated equipment, materials needed as part of the artwork's aesthetic and function. So I didn't come with a lot of solutions, but um, I thank you for listening. That's how we're actually troubleshooting at the moment. Um, we are becoming hoarders. We have reached and contacted the very few people who know how to repair some decks, but this isn't sustainable. I look forward to the conversations and feedback on how we might be able to implement open source hardware in the areas I highlighted, either on Discord, the chat, or via email. I hope we can learn and engage with you all. Thanks.